So when we start climbing, everyone thinks chalk is everything, yeah? So what we want to make sure is we're not using too much chalk. And what happens when you use too much chalk, you don't, and you just slather your hands in chalk. The second you put your fingers on those holds, what happens is you then start putting chalk into the texture of the holds. And what happens then is the negative effect happens as you start doing dry fires like that, which can be quite painful and dangerous and injury prone. So before you climb, a lot of people just smack the chalk around in the air. On you get, and away we go. And you're only using chalk to get rid of the perspiration on your hands. So if your hands are dry already, most likely you don't need that much chalk, just enough to give you that extra edge, to give you that send on that hard climb. Yeah. <laughs> a great tip for beginners as well is uh, when we start climbing, everyone's thinking our arms are going to be the way forward. So it's all about how strong our arms are. If you think about how our bodies work is we're spending all our time on our legs. So our legs are really the driving force for all the power when we are climbing. So we try and use that to our ability by not pulling ourselves into the wall like this. By doing this, you're engaging all the muscles in your upper body, which is gonna make your arms more tired and giving you less time on the wall because you're gonna sap that energy quicker. Another way to negate this then is to drop your body weight lower onto your base of support being your feet. And now what we're doing is we're just hanging off of what essentially our skeleton. So our fingers are curled over and yes, they're working a bit but we're saving energy by not having to engage all those muscles in your arms to then make you move around. The trick is then transferring that energy while you're climbing with a straight arm, which is where all your footwork that we will learn comes into play. And we can very quickly see that climbing with a straight arm uses a lot less energy, especially when we're going through things like overhangs and roofs. We make our feet nice and long. Oh, always aiming for a straight arm to save that energy. Your legs are the strongest part of your body. Uh, we want to use that to our advantage. Uh, they've got a lot more stamina and a lot more strength than your arms do. Um, so what we want to do is try and utilize that as much as we possibly can. We can all do maybe 10 pull-ups if you're feeling quite strong. We can walk on our legs all day. All right, so the trick then is when we're climbing, always picture what your legs are doing. Move with your feet first and use that in a way to project your way towards the next hold. That's going to save the energy on your arms, which is going to allow you to climb for longer. It's going to finesse your footwork and it's going to improve the style with which you climb those climbs. <laughs> so much harder. When beginners start using their climbing shoes for the first time, uh, a common mistake a lot of people do is they're not using the very forefront of their shoe where your toes would be. What we're doing is it's using the inside of our foot. We're going to be climbing on holds as small as these ones here. And without putting your toe on the end there, you're not going to be able to stand on there. So what we're looking for is we're looking to get a toe on the hold, looking to relax your calf muscle so that your back of your heel drops onto the hold. Okay, a lot of people also point their toes when they start. You're losing a lot of friction on that hold and a lot of surface area as well. By dropping the heel, you're gonna get a much better bite. You're also flat footed and you're now stuck in that position. You'd either have to swivel it entirely around to get yourself in a different direction. Whereas working off of your toes, it's easy enough to work your feet around into the position you'd like to get to. When new climbers start climbing, everyone thinks it's all about getting stronger, which it is, but all in our own time. So when we think of training, we want to go back in there. And in here, we can train as much as we want to, because all we need to do as beginner climbers is climb. All right, all the strength you need, all the skills and technique you need, everything you need in order to get better and progress as a climber is right on the walls over here. As climbers, 
we consider the best climber to be the one that's having the most fun, all right? Uh, climbing is such a subjective and personal journey that everyone's going to have different uh, paces of improvement and different skill levels and different strength. So we're very hard to compare between good climbers and bad climbers. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the best climber being the one that's having the most fun. And that's all it really is. So when I go and choose a climb, I just want to have fun. Thank you.